please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2018. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences, mathematics A, and another for natural sciences, mathematics B. This problem is from the 2018 mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 5 of 1. For the complex number z equals cosine of 1 third pi plus the square root of negative 1 sine of 1 third pi, the following equality holds. z plus the square of z plus the cube of z plus z to the fourth plus z to the fifth equals blank. Let us recall two important formulas here. First is Euler's formula. It says that if we set i to be equal to the square root of negative 1, then this, this equation holds. So e to the i times theta, where theta is a variable, could be real number, and this is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And this is useful because it relates the exponential function to the trigonometric functions. And also, if you try to substitute negative theta here, and we do some operations, for example, if we add e to the i theta and e to the minus i theta, then we divide it by 2, we get cosine theta, and that's easy to do. And in the same way, if we do a subtraction, then divide it by 2i, we get sine of theta. Then the other formula is the formula for a geometric series. So a geometric series is one where the terms in the sum are terms of a geometric sequence or geometric progression. So a geometric progression is one where it starts with a number, then the next term is the first number times some common ratio r, and then the next term is this term again times the common ratio r, and so on. And there are n terms in this series here. So that's why we name it S sub n. So we count, so here the exponent of r is zero, and then here the exponent of r is one, up to n minus 1. So 0 to n minus 1, there are n terms there. Now if you have this, we can actually condense the formula into this. It is the first term times the quantity 1 minus r raised to the n. This is the number of terms. All over 1 minus r. Now we are looking for this sum and clearly this is a geometric series because if this is the first term, the next term is this times z, and this, this term is again this times z, and this term is again this times z, and so on. So it looks like we have a common ratio. Our r here is z, and our first term is also z. So we use that. Again, our first term is is equal to our r, which is just z. And here we have five terms, one, two, three, four, five. And if we just plug it in here, a sub one, r, and the five, we see that that is just equal to this, which is from here. And if we just flip the one and the z to the fifth and one and z, so if we flip that, we, that becomes a negative numerator. And if we flip this, we get a negative denominator. So they just cancel. And these are just the same. And here we use a to represent the sum that we're looking for. We can also use simple factoring to obtain the same result here. So if we recall, if we have the expression z to the n minus 1, this can be factored as follows. One of the factors is z minus 1. And the remaining is such that we have a geometric series again, which starts with 1, z, z squared, and so on, up to z minus 1. So if we set n minus 1 here to 5, because our greatest 
number here, our greatest exponent here is 5. So if we set n minus 1 equals 5, then we get n equals 6. So this bit here becomes 6, and we get that a, a is this bit here, this, this part of the factor, and that is just z to the 6 minus 1 over z minus 1, and because this is an extra 1 here, we subtract it. Now we are left with this expression, and if we simplify this a bit, if we multiply ne negative 1 by z minus 1, we can combine them into one denominator, z minus 1, and in the numerator we get this, which we can factor into this, and it is just the same as the formula. So now we know what we're looking for. We want to know the value of this expression here. So we just we just want to evaluate this and remove z. And we do that by using Euler's formula. And in the and in this formula we set theta to be one third pi because that's what's inside the cosine here and the sine here. And again we have this thing here as this thing, so they're the same. And so we just replace this with this, and we get an exponential. Therefore, z is actually, so this z, which equals this, could actually be written as an exponential, that is e to the i times one-third of pi. One-third of pi, again, is the theta in here. And now we can put this in here. So we get this. a equals this expression. And the next thing we need to do is to put this into a more recognizable form. So this is, in fact, already giving us some signs that we could, we could solve this into a simpler version. Now this is what we obtained from the previous slide. And what we'll do next is we're going to try to put it in one of these forms. And because we have a negative and a negative here, probably we're going to use the sine version. So we notice that the exponents must be the same in magnitude, and only the signs of the exponent change. And that gives us an idea. What if we take one half of this exponent and factor it out? If we do that, then we have to subtract one half of this exponent from this bit, and we also have to subtract one half of this exponent from this bit. Therefore, that becomes negative here, and here it becomes positive. And let's do that, in fact. So 1 half of 5 thirds pi is 5 sixths pi. So we factor out 5 sixths pi i. And notice that if we, if we multiply this out again, 5 sixths pi plus 5 sixths pi gives us 5 thirds pi. So that checks out. And then this bit, if we multiply that back in, 5 6 pi i minus 5 6 pi i, that's just 0. So e to the 0 is again 1. And we do the same thing in the denominator. So we get this. Now it's looking more like the sine thing here. And in fact, that's really the sine of theta because if you add a denominator 2i here and you add 2i here, that's all right because the 2i and the 2i cancel. But now this is really sine, and this is also sine. And these three factors here, we can see that they simplify because 5 sixth pi minus 1 sixth pi is just 4 sixth pi, which is 2 thirds pi. Then we add that to 1 third pi here, we get just pi. So this actually simplifies to e to the pi i. And here we get sine of pi over 6 times 5, and here sine of pi over 6. And in the previous problem, that is the fourth problem of problem 1, we, we've shown that this is actually equal to this, and therefore they just cancel, and we are left with e to the pi i. And e to the pi i, if we substitute i uh, pi in here as theta, so e to the pi i, and here be it becomes cosine of pi and cosine of pi is negative 1, and sine of pi is just 0. So our answer here is negative 1. If you learned something new today, 
please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!